Splitting Hairs Free Salon Education Podcast starts now. Featuring Matt Beck, Christina Cavalcanti, Brian Hare, Dre Bolin, Thaddeus Bolin, and Daniel Downs. Today's episode is powered by MinervaBeauty.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to Splitting Hairs, the hairdressers podcast. This is February 7th. I've got Drea Boland. Here and present. <laughs> Daniel Downs. Hello. Christina Cavalcanti, Thad Boland. And to- today, we have a lot to talk about. We do. We mm-hmm. gathered a week's worth of information. Uh, a lot of cool things happening. We're also giving away a Minerva Beauty blow dryer. So, uh, again, like always, I want to say thank you to MinervaBeauty.com for sponsoring the show, being a big part of the show, and um, and that's it. So we're going to give away one of their brand new blow dryers that they came out with. We've been using it in the salon. It's a really powerful, it's like Mighty Mouse. I love right? it. Yeah. It's small, uh, powerful. It's a workhorse blow dryer. It's got a 10-foot cord. Really cool. I'll bring it out uh, when we give it away and show it to you guys. Um, that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Things that we're going to be talking about today, so that those of you that you know might want to tune in, might not. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, being a loser. Yes. That's the first thing. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes you have to let people win. Uh, so that's another thing that we're going to talk about. Also, um, there's a coloring outside the lines contest by Paul Mitchell. That's uh, um, kind of like their big contest that they have going on right now to win a trip to Vegas. So what I want to do is I'm going to we're going to talk about that contest later. But the one thing I want to let everyone know is how to take a good Instagram picture. Oh, that's a nice one. for good the one. contest. Right. So uh, we'll, we'll share the details of the contest um, a little bit into the show. And we'll also talk about taking great pictures because I'll, I know a lot of hairdressers out there have challenges taking great pictures in the salon. So um, <laughs> me <all>, being one. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, um, we have. You guys can call into the show and be a part of the show um, throughout this whole thing. Let me see if I can get everything working here. You guys can call in, be a part of the show. Call 833-FSE-LIVE if you uh, if you want to talk about what we're talking about or you just want to play the games that we're playing. Remember that number, 833-FSE-LIVE. Also, look up exactly what that number is because <laughs> I never remember. So there it is. That's it. How do we feel? I feel good about this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about um, is is kind of a big subject. You guys read this? Yeah. I I, I was a little heated during it. Okay. So this is um, Phil Does Hair, right? Phil Does Hair is uh, an amazing hairdresser. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, He's a super nice guy. So So he made a post on Instagram. He has no idea that we're going to talk about this today. But the reason I... Surprise. (laughs) Right. (laughs) The reason I want to talk about it, and Christina actually brought it to my attention earlier when we were going over what are we going to talk about in the show, and um, I think the biggest thing about this is that I think a lot of people go through it, uh, what he's going through, especially if you're an educator. So um, I, what I want to do is, does somebody want to read this? Who's really good at reading? Anybody? I'll do it. You want to okay. do it? All right, Daniel, you do it. Okay. So we're gonna, let's read the post word for word because I don't want to get any of his words wrong. Gotcha. And then we can give our opinions. Okay, that. so it starts off very Talladega Nights. I love that. <laughs> right. Well, that's if you're not that's first. Me. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not first, are you last? Right. All right. So it comes to my attention that the guys who coined the term pixelated hair have yet again come for me on social media. They want to call me an opportunist, a fake, and an a hole. Let me tell you the short story of what happened. One saw the pixel train going viral on Instagram. Two followed said hairstylist three friends of mine all attempted it four it took me only three mannequins to finally nail it with some tape and some light work five i did it on two people six i set up a youtube video shoot and filmed three models at a television studio for the purposes of showing how i did it on youtube seven realizing the other hash i mean sorry quote unquote pixel guys we're not sharing their secrets and we're charging for their seminars. I decided against putting the tutorials online for free because that would devalue the, the work. Instead, I put them on my website 
and nearly never talk about it unless someone asks. Out of respect, I have kept them quiet for years. However, they take every great opportunity, like being published in magazines or on Instagram, to publicly try and tear me down. So what was, what was supposed to be an awesome thing always ends up with more pain and frustration than it was worth. Okay, so let's start there um, because I think that kind of sums it up. The mm-hmm. one thing I didn't want to do was put words in Phil's post. So that's what Phil said. Um, th- the thing that I want to talk about today is... Um, being in education, we've all been educators and we all Mm -hmm. are educators. Um, there's a, there's a certain thing where some educators like to teach, but they don't ever expect you to do it. Right. So they, they love that. I guess it's like the ego of saying, you know, this is my technique. This is something I do, but you can learn it because I'll, I'll, you can pay me to learn it. But then if you ever get really good at it, you better never use it in front of people, right? Right. So it's a funny thing because hair, almost everything on the planet has been done, right? And maybe pixel hair is a little bit different and maybe pixel hair specifically wasn't done and I still don't know how to do it. But um, now that he's kind of explained that it's done with tape, it's way more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But so that's the thing. So why... At this point, so in my career, one of the first videos I ever put out, one of the very first videos I put out, somebody kind of attacked about what I did on the video. Now, that video was very similar, and I, and I caught the similarities um, after it was called out and everything. But my thought when I was making the video was there's people that you look up to in the industry. There's people that you learn from, right? Absolutely. And those people, the, the biggest challenge is those people – you would hope want the best for whoever they're teaching or who they're trying to inspire. Otherwise you should just not show it to anybody. Right. And then when somebody else goes out and does it and now they have a following and maybe their following's bigger because Phil is a a popular guy and he keeps getting more and more popular and he's creating all these really awesome techniques. Pixel thing is just a very small piece of what he even does. Right. It just kind he of mentioned that he only did it a couple of times anyway. Yeah, he did. And and that's the thing. I love that he I feel what he's saying because he's saying that out of respect, I didn't even post it for free because they were charging for it. But at the same time, so when he filmed about it, he he didn't post it for free. It's the mm-hmm. same thing with like free salon education. Um it's just there's there's so much more to the industry, I think, because we do things for free. People get frustrated sometimes, right? Yeah, but I don't understand it because basically hairdressing is reinventing the wheel over and over again. Right. You know, what's old is new again. That's like um, finger waves. They've been around forever. Right. But yet everybody keeps thinking it's a new thing and they lay claim to it. Right. But it's not. Yeah. And that's it. Th- like, so, and everybody that that does hair they're cutting bobs and they didn't invent the bob right Mm -hmm. they didn't invent bangs right or certain types of bangs so it's just it's one of those things like i i just don't think you should teach things if you don't expect other people to do that and that's just um it's just the way it is like if you're hung up on one technique that's Mm -hmm. what really gets me like if i was just like oh um, you know, we're doing a podcast now. A lot of people are doing podcasts, and I was mm. bitter they should, about they, they it. They shouldn't do that. That's our thing. No, and honestly, it was Josh XO's thing, right? Because he did okay. he did, from the hair industry standpoint. So, but I, Josh doesn't call me and say, "Hey, I can't believe you're doing a podcast," right? And you're a total and, biter. And then I can't be upset that other people are starting to do podcasts. You got to be excited because that's what it's all about. And one of the biggest things that is said is um, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. But True. that's like, it's a silly thing. It's a, I think that's a silly thing to say because it's just kind of another way to push out your ego into it and say, you know, you're imitating me. Well, not really imitating. What it is, you're taking people's techniques and that, and you're teaching, right? That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's a, it's, that's what the industry is about. This is the hair industry. It's not about um, inventing a technique and then just you're the only one that can do it. You in you're an educator because you want to show techniques and then you want people to do it because you're trying to better the industry. That's what so it should true. be. Well, right? That's where my favorite thing that JP says is um, success unshared is failure. Right. I always love that one. That is a good one. Mm-hmm. Thoughts, Dre? No, I just think that um, 
you should share as many techniques and many how you do things with as many people as possible because if you're truly an educator you want information out there you want people to easily obtain that information whether it's coming from you or coming from someone else no one's create mm-hmm. no one's creating this wheel it's right the same thing over and over so yeah just bring it out to everyone's attention and i kind of feel like you know people are more receptive to different personalities so right. you might be teaching the same thing as like 10 other people but maybe you're putting a spin on it that spoke to somebody individually or exactly even if it's the way you verbalize it and how you break it down is different from the way somebody else said it good point we all learn differently and we all pick up on different things. So whether it's simply breaking down how he tapes off the hair, how you hold the scissor or which sectioning you do, people pick up different things from each educator. So there's going to be varying, um, varying things. Like no one's going to verbatim copy somebody else. Like, but whatever. But you might. You and might. that's the thing. Like but you watch a, a Sassoon DVD on how to cut an A-line bob and you may do it exactly like that. And then you yeah. may become somebody that people look up to and they want to learn from. And then you cut it that exact same way. That's not. I'm sure a lot of people learned from Sassoon how right. to do an A-line bob and they're all doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So it's like it doesn't make sense to be upset about somebody doing something exactly the way you are. And my so my other thing with this is giving credit, right? So, mm-hmm. but this thing, I can't every time I cut hair say yeah, I sure. learned this from this person. You just can't. Like you, you can't get down like that. But you yeah. can't. You do say it. Like there's so many classes that I've done that are long form things. That yeah, you're like, Phil. You know, you hear him talking and you see him out and about, and he's at hair shows, and he's always supporting other people and never, saying, oh, yeah. "Oh my gosh, this person." Uh, was a mentor inspired or you know right. when we interviewed him a few years like a couple years back on the show he definitely talked about while while he was teaching because wasn't he at one of the schools um he was he was he was jumping all over the place yeah. i'm not sure if he was at a school or not but but he's gained so much insight probably from all around phil so. is phil is incredible in a way that um this is like the phil show let's talk about phil show but um, it's a Phil fan Let's club. talk about mm-hmm. Phil. You know what? Baby. I really look up to Phil because not only is th- did he figure out mm-hmm. that technique, which whatever he figured out that technique or watched the DVD on that, whatever he did. But then he was at Sassoon. Like when we first started doing this podcast, I would see posts from him. He was going back and forth to Sassoon. This he is a very studied person, and it shows through his work. So if any of you guys are wondering who we're talking about, it's at Phil Does Hair. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys follow him. But it's at Phil Does Hair on Instagram. You can see all of his work. It's unbelievable. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, he's just somebody that I think a lot of people should look up to. A lot of people do look up to. And it's you see posts like this and you just say, you know what? This is happening way more to more Hater's people. Gonna Hater's yeah. going to hate. Hater's going to hate. It's happening to way more people than, it, than people realize. And I think uh, especially when you start getting a following and then you have a bigger following than the person you learn from, that's just... You know, it's the evolution of the industry and it is what it is. And yeah, but it's just it's people are going to be bitter about it. So that's the thing. Uh, that's that part of the thing. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about James it. Orr was just saying, let's talk about his hairpiece. Amazing. Mm-hmm. He would love to offer them in the salon. They are amazing yeah. for the hairpiece. They I'm, look this, legit. I know. These, that's the selling point. So there's these male hair pieces that uh, Phil does. So you guys can see it on his Instagram. But he, you shave, and it's not like Phil invented it, so let's just start there. But he has is making it popular. You shave the basically from the parietal ridge around a U shape on the head, and you put this piece over, and it looks so real. And it's it's like there for a couple weeks, and then you take it off, and you shave again, you put it back on. It's unbelievable. Uh, we're going to get a video of it, and also... You can check it out, his Instagram. He has, yeah, yeah, you can see it all over his Instagram. And I want to get Phil on this show uh, through uh, video Skype or a phone call or whatever so that he can uh, kind of talk us through it. And I want to go over that whole thing because I think it's really cool. And I know he wants to be a part of the show sometime as well. So um, that's that. So if anybody wants to comment on that, had an experience like that, give us a call, 833-FSE-LIVE. Also, the next thing we want to talk about is (laughs) sometimes you have to let them win. So the, the whole thing with this is... 
the Eagles played the Patriots, right? Um, Did and you get the tape or so no? There's Are no you tape. Eagles uh, fans? So this could be hearsay then. So this could be hearsay. Right. So we, we don't know for sure. This is an unconfirmed article is what you're saying. Very unconfirmed. Okay. So, but, but confirmed enough. It was on. We uh, like the message that it, it brings. On, yes. We're not even talking about the article and it, it's not about football. So any of you guys that are tuning out, but the Eagles did win and uh, we're very excited about that. So um, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, who's won a lot of Super Bowls. Uh, five. <laughs> five. <laughs> um, so Tom Brady wins the Super Bowl and or loses the Super Bowl to the Eagles. Right. Get my stuff straight here. Eagles win. And then his wife, Giselle, decides uh, his kid is crying. His little girl is crying. And she says uh, they haven't won in a million years. Um, and then she says, let's see. At one point, the five-year-old daughter, Vivian, blurted out, the Eagles have won the Super Bowl. Uh, and then she says, just in time, Daddy won five times. They never won before their whole life. They never won a Super Bowl. You have to let someone else win sometimes. So she says to her little girl, you have to let someone else win sometimes. So like he let the Eagles win, which is like, like another. You can see t- in his face that that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> which is another. He was crying too. <laughs> right. Which is another topic. And that's not this show. But um, the whole thing is about losing. Right. So now we talk about we kind of move from what we were talking about into the losing category. And what I want to hear from you guys is, uh, have you lost to something um, that you can remember? Oh, yeah. And um, <laughs> and let's talk about bouncing back from that because I think the the biggest conversation now is we've moved from everybody gets a trophy mindset, mm-hmm. right? And in the salon, it's kind of like we're everybody's working with the millennial generation a lot now, right. and and a lot of people like to complain about work ethic and all of that stuff. But the the fact is. We're going from this, you know, everybody gets a trophy mindset, which I remember I had four trophies for karate uh, when I was a kid, all of them first place, and I never won one time. So <laughs> later what? in life, I remember having these trophies, and this is just the thing. It's not like my parents gave it to me, but the the um, somehow I ended up with first place trophies in karate, and Did later in life, I, first place? they were first place. Yeah. I were know. you on a team? That, no, like, there was butt? no team. No, there was no you team. You know what I mean? Like the tournaments, like karate you're a kid? winner too. He, he, he no, it was one on one. Actually, got first place and beat him up in the park. <laughs> Sweep the leg, Maddie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, um, I had all these first place trophies, and later in life, I, I thought about it because I, I remember not winning. Mm. But then later, I saw these trophies like in a box or something, and I was like, why do I have first place trophies in something I never won? And that's and why did I keep them? It's, it's kind of the mentality that a lot of people our age or from you know, my age and younger kind of grew yeah, up in that way. Yeah, I was about to say, that's, that's not in my generation. Yeah, now, not mine. Like, <laughs> I'm the old. I remember here. leaving <laughs> soccer tournaments, like, pissed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now everybody is, is kind, not everybody, but a lot of people are making a shift in that because they see, and this is what happens. This is like the evolution of uh, the decades of whatever, you know, like people learn from their parents a certain way mm-hmm. and then they try to fix it and they do it differently. Maybe you gave your best in that time. <laughs> You were competing against it. yourself. Yeah, I know. The consolation. Oh. Um, so that's it. And who knows what it was first place for, right? But whatever. But it, comparing it to running a salon, it is hard when you want everyone to grow, when you are giving things out or giving promotions. And it is hard right. to kind of balance all of that. Yeah. Because the relationships too. I mean, with us, because it's a small salon, you yeah. can't slight and have someone out of the group. Yeah, like you, you can't, know, it's hard like to have hard one to, person yeah. outside of the group, right? <laughs> right. But, but at the same time, you guys base everything off of numbers. Like you yeah. can't argue with numbers. It's not about personality or anything like that. It's just well, yeah, Drea, that's where it moves to. It, it's so black and white. <laughs> that's the thing. So when we talk about the the losing, like and that's why you have to t- teach your kids about numbers. Like yeah, yeah. If it's a score, forty one to thirty three, right? Is that yeah. what? Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the score. You didn't yeah. let them you win. You didn't. Yeah, they didn't win. What it should have come <laughs> down to. It comes was, down to the numbers. <laughs> it comes down to the numbers. Yeah. Well, I mean, what she should have said was, <laughs> if your daddy knew how to catch a football, we may be sitting in a different seat. Oh God. 
I mean, no. they probably were sitting in the best uh, seats well, there. Oh, my yeah. grandmother was a... <laughs> well, I was talking about the winning seat. <laughs> well, personally, my grandmother was a teacher. So she was used to dealing with kids that, you know, are having a tantrum. They're right. not happy right now. So her thing was always, well, if you don't win, you learn. Right. That's yeah. That's true. And yep. that's, that's, that's yes. The, yeah. So. Because there's a lot to even learn how to lose. I mean, I know with the, the hate it, we have to tell him that. Our yeah, son, so much you know? good, so much like, good comes out of losing. We don't let him win life all the time. The game of no, life. The game of life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did not win the Nerf war. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, that Danielle Andrea had with him the other day. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. did not win. He, he's he just lucky win. that I didn't bring <laughs> my Nerf guns. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, sorry I, about I have your a carpet. Couple. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's kind of the moral of the story is, you know, uh, as a salon, you have to set goals, but not mm -hmm. not only goals. You should make it the way that everybody earns everything. So what we do is we base everything on a few different things. Average ticket, which is the average amount that you bring in. And like Danielle, she just started here. She's going to work her way up really quick because we already see the fact that you're, the clients are coming in. You're getting a lot of new requests. Yeah, She's going to work her way up quick. But the numbers that we base everything on have nothing to do with the, uh, well, only one of them, but th have nothing to do with the amount of people you do. It's about what you do per person, right? So average ticket is how much you do in per guest that comes in. It, if you have a $30 haircut, let's say, what is your average ticket? If it's $30, that means you're not doing much to push yourself. You're not talking much. Numbers tell everything. They, they tell... Uh, like I can look at Drea's numbers for her day and I can see, was she talking about this? Was she doing that? Was she really busy? Because she, if she's really busy, her numbers are going to suffer. It's just, it's just the way it is. And not just Drea, that's everybody. But when you have a busy day, it's hard to be more successful. It's hard um, to add in those extra, you know, those extra highlights or, you know what, let's add on. Yeah. So you do a lot of guests, but you don't mm -hmm. do a lot per guest. Right. So a lot of us want to do more, or make more, do less. Right. So you have to make sure that you watch your numbers, watch average ticket, watch services per guest, watch uh, retail per guest, watch your rebooking percentage, your frequency of visit. All these numbers are are a big deal. Which in then the salon. gets into as you're doing that and you are you then kind of your prices then go up again and make room for you to do that again, because not everyone will stay with you at a yeah. hundred dollar haircut, you right. know, eighty dollar haircut. But it's nice because the way you guys designed your system, I came from um, a larger salon down in Maryland and all the competitions were based off of dollars and, right. you know, how much retail did you sell? How much this? How much that? And if you were a new stylist, you didn't really have the opportunity to compete in those right. contests. But by doing it the way you do, it's not about the overall number. I mean, it is, but. I know what you mean. But though. as far as like a new stylist starting out at a salon, when you focus on, you know, the services per guest, the retail, all that, it builds for a successful. For a yeah. successful individual. What individual reaches a successful salon. Yes. Yeah. The target goal. When, when people look at a dollar amount, they're they're thinking short term. Right. They're not right. thinking long term. The Those individual numbers are long term numbers. And we do give out. And it also, might take a little right. bit slower time for you to get there yeah but we also try not to take on too many first time stylists at once because it would take forever yeah it's the reason that <laughs> danielle's walking into a situation where we haven't had a new stylist in a long time and now but and we've had overflow in a way it's you know obviously this month is a little weird but for the most part we have overflow or a want for a certain price point and danielle fits that uh the overflow and she fits the price point right now. So she's going to get busy quicker than she's better than the other price people. Point. She's way better than the price. She point. really is. But nice. that's the point, right? That's exactly what you should be. Definitely. Be but mm -hmm. I also kind of, you know, really stepped in a golden pile basically because you guys had already worked really hard. Never been called a golden pile before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, eloquent. That's a what new one. I say? That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's better than actually saying the curse. A pile. Yeah, but exactly. Yes. But um, yeah, I, I really lucked out in the fact that because you guys have built up such a reputation within the community, every new guest that I've had is new to the area because of the online presence, because of, you yeah. know, knowing other people, um, whether and le actually I just had a lady yesterday that said, you know, not a lot of businesses around here actually have Yelp. Right. 
and that's how I found you guys. So it's not even that she's into social media itself. Yeah. So because you hit all these different things, plus you have, you know, practically what, five star rating. Yeah. It's pretty easy for We're me. We're strong right now. on Yelp and I, I actually think that's a good thing to say because um those are things you don't hear that often. But Yelp is one of those things where I, I hated Yelp at the beginning. Oh. Like we hated <laughs> Yelp because it was like People that would go on there and they would write a bad review or something and you just, there's nothing you could do about it. Right. And one of them, I don't even think had ever been here. No, I, no. You could exactly, tell by yeah. the message. Yeah. Do you still have to be You know, like there's attitude. trolls on there that can yeah. just, and they don't work with you to get that off of there. They don't look into no. it and the history of it to see if it's actually coming from a, a oh. real legit person. Yeah. Like if it doesn't so meet their hard. algorithm, then... But that's the funny thing. They had a weird algorithm because they would say, you know, well, we're really catering to Yelpers. So if you Yelp right. a lot about a lot of businesses, they consider you um, like right. a legit place. And this person had like three Yelps, no profile picture was. Yeah. And the Yelps were weird. Like they all were yeah. very odd. It it's like kind of like random seeing places, right? a like random Facebook page right yeah. that has three friends and their pictures are a bunch of like a page full of political weirdness. Yeah. You know, so it was just yeah. kind of like that. <laughs> so you just got to be careful. But now I put a lot of time into our Yelp because I want to make sure that photos are up to date because um, about a year ago I looked at it and it was so dated. And there was a lot of photos from people um, that had come to our salon at the very beginning. And the worst thing. That and a lot of work of people that didn't even work here anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People that didn't Names. work here. But also like highlights that I did when I first got out of beauty school, which were like the Kelly Clarkson <laughs> like slices. Oh. You know, oh. and and somebody's Can you give stripey. Us a show on that. Yeah, that, sure. That was that I was can still do it. Trend. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to come back. But, oh, it has. Uh, I have not. <laughs> oh, no, it did. Well, for but a that's bit. uh that's the thing. So um, Yelp. Make sure that you check out your Yelp, your Google. Make sure you check your images to make sure that they are. I could say make sure one more time to to just see if they. Uh, are current because you need to make sure that those profiles oh are yeah current. alicia davis is saying um <coughs> because they didn't advertise with yelp they would hide their good reviews mm. so they were kind of controlling that way too i advertise oh. with them oh, i think okay. i pay 20 bucks a month for them not bad but what that allows you to do is have uh a customized profile oh. it doesn't allow you to erase bad reviews still so um i I'm not sure we have to check on that, that you can pay to get reviews removed. I don't think you can, but I do know that. And we do live in an area where there's like 15 salons in about one mile, two mile radius. So yeah. It yeah. kind of pays off. And the town has 2,500 people. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of salons here. But so, I would say 95% of my new guests all have come to us from um, reviews and from yeah. on online presence i would say the biggest yeah. thing that we have with reviews is the 175 demand force reviews oh my to gosh be honest. yeah it's unbelievable um you know we work with demand force and they uh it's a little pricey for demand force but for what you get i don't think it is um because i think it's like a few hundred dollars a month but it's they right it's awesome it is it's awesome fantastic. yeah they communicate with your guests you you send uh automatic te text messages right. to confirm appointments. Um, you can do email templates. You can also do um, the, what was I going to say? Uh, what were we talking about? The reviews. advertising, the reviews. reviews. <laughs> yeah. After somebody leaves uh, the salon, they get an email to review the salon quickly. Yeah, and um, if you talk about that in the chair and get them excited about it and they, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, like Google and Yelp are tough because you got to actually talk about it. And what, I've learned over having a salon now, we've had it for 10 years or whatever, people don't talk about stuff. Like the, people yeah. talk, they just don't talk about stu the, that stuff. So it's hard to talk to your guest about it, but Demand Force kind of puts it out there right away. And then we, so that's why we have 175 mm -hmm. reviews on there and maybe 15, okay. 20, 30, maybe, I don't know, on Google. Because they don't Yelp have to go out same. and search, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do it right there. And I think they get like a 20% off uh, coupon or something for reviewing on Demand Force. Yeah, they're you awesome. You customize it. How do you even do a review on Google? They send out the birthday. Google's easy actually to review, but, um, but people just don't do it because they've already been to you. They're over it. They don't they're think about you till the next time they get their hair done. You know, it's just the way it is. Yeah, but again, this is where even my guests from where I'm coming from, 
Right. They've checked out anything, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. Yelp, anything that you guys are on. And yeah. they see the updated pictures. They see the online presence. And they see that there's an array of different styles, cuts, right. colors, that it's not just one cookie cutter style. Right. So it, it's made it inviting, pretty much. Cool. Okay. So we we went way into that. We we nailed it. <laughs> so um so that is uh the the you have to lose. That's just the that's the reality. That, that, that's how you lose. Well, we but went into lose. we I went learned. into how we went into to everything. manage. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> All right. So uh so next thing, Paul Mitchell's having a contest. Um and the contest is called Color Outside the Lines. So the I want to just go through uh, exactly what that contest is. Then we have a little tip uh, from Robert Cromine's uh, video. Why don't you play the... You want to just play the tip? If you play the tip and then you can explain how further... Okay. You know. Let's do that. Don't you think? Yeah. It would make more sense? Yeah. Here's Robert Cromine's with a tip <laughs> on doing a photo shoot. My name is Robert Cromies. What I want to talk to you about is the capture. In order to have an incredible photo shoot, I've been on many over the years. The key thing that helps me is a tool, is a storyboard. What that is is a visual plot of what you're trying to target so that you're going to be much closer communicating to photography, to makeup, to fashion. Storyboards are going to give you the guiding light to give you a successful campaign and a winning entry to color outside the lines. So there is that. So, um, also, I want to give a shout out to our entire family who's on Facebook watching. My mom, your sister, Chris. Oh, really? Your niece, Ange? Carly. Oh, Carly. And just watching. I know. Oh. Ange was calling me and I was running around before the show and I was texting her. I'm like, I can't run the, the sound in the cameras. I'm really sorry. I'll call you as soon as I'm done. <laughs> and then, uh, well, this is like proof that you are definitely doing this. And then, um, let's see. And then Jennifer Lenzen is on uh Facebook as well, and I, I wanted. Do we send her a, an email, Chris, uh, about her brush? I don't know. I thought I had sent. If we didn't, I just wanted to say out there. Oh yeah, like she's didn't. yeah. Yeah, we, we are gonna. We're get, in the process yeah. of with Ergo because. Yeah, she put her brush, her Ergo brush. You into can't a, put the plastic brush in those um, light boxes, I believe. Yeah, uh, maybe certain melted. brushes you can, but those you can't. Yeah, so we we're just. Uh, conversating with uh i so want to figure out get what a brush. happened yeah but yeah. you'll be getting a new brush <laughs> for sure uh since i saw you online here okay that's so much easier than emailing um <laughs> all right so uh color outside the lines contest so that was the tip from robert uh, and i'll get into that in a second the way that you enter it the entries are accepted now through april 1st um the the grand prize will be announced may 15th so they're looking for uh, master colors with top talent, uh, best national entry. So you must be licensed. In the U.S. and Canada? Yes. Um, they're doing best student entry and then best international entry. So they're doing three different things. Um, the categories are a natural makeover, a salon-friendly look using natural tones, which is really cool. I'm glad that they're yeah. doing that. And then... I have a feeling, like I don't really know, but I know Colin's the new art director of color, and I just have a feeling that Colin was like, I want to see like natural hair. Well, you that's know? what he was talking about when yeah. he was here back in the summertime, talking about how natural hair is just as beautiful as these avant-garde styles right. and yeah. creating a salon-friendly inspiration over stuff that you don't necessarily see. Exactly, yeah. So that's the thing. So we want to make sure that you know we have... Uh, so natural hair and then creative makeover, which will be an avant-garde look using fashion tones. So the prize for this contest is a grand prize, uh, color outside the lines trophy. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Shut your mouth. And then, uh, air rights. Mm-hmm. airfare and hotel accommodations to attend gathering for an on stage presentation. That's huge. Which is cool. That'll be in July. Oh, great. That's in July. And then participating <laughs> in a Paul Mitchell collection shoot includes airfare and accommodations for that, which is huge. Uh, feature in their new and now magazine, a blog post, social media coverage, all kinds of different things. And then uh, Paul Mitchell 20th anniversary collection of limited edition color items, which is probably those color bowls and all kinds of yeah, other Yeah, but cool what stuff. other stuff is there? I love the limited edition I know. Edition I was just stuff. thinking that too. Hopefully we get those things. Um, 
So well, you better enter the, the contest. Really cool contest. Uh, the tip that Robert was saying is create a storyboard. You guys have done hair shows before. A storyboard is basically inspiration that you get. Um, so if you like this cut, you like this color, different things, you put pictures of the model up and you just kind of create uh, what you the inspirations for a look that you want to create on one person. And it's just a better way of keeping organized, basically. It's yeah, like it sectioning out, a haircut. It right. maps out the direction you want to go. Yeah, in. so it'll give you more success. So that was his tip. My tip uh, would be... You definitely are going to have to go big for this, I think. I don't think that this is going to be... Uh, people are really good at taking pictures now. So not to deter anybody from doing it, because I think everybody should try. But what you need to do is make sure you have the right lighting. So mm -hmm. a ring light is the one thing that I wanted to talk about today. It's key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wish we could kind of show if them. If you don't have a ring light, don't even enter this contest. <laughs> if you don't have a <laughs> ring light. Yeah. That, 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 that's you don't what I just took natural from light? Light? You had that Here. really close to pie. Oh, Okay. And that's bright light. So you will <laughs> blind the person with the insert ring light. Star Wars it, sounds here. If you don't have a ring light <laughs> like this, then you um you're probably gonna need a photographer or something like that. But the great thing about a ring light is this is a couple hundred dollars on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's um monstrous. You put up the light like this. Watch this. Watch how good my face looks after this. Oh, it's not. <laughs> no, that's not, not right good. now. Not, um, <laughs> but you have to take a it's selfie. okay. You're pretty. It's okay. Boy. It's fine. It's fine. Boy. Oh, thanks, Daniel. <laughs> so, um, so the ring light, it's a couple hundred bucks, but the great thing about it is that it surrounds the head with light. And then the further away you make it from a wall, we like to shoot on a white wall. Mm -hmm. The further away you get, the darker the background gets, and the more uh it brings out the person in there. So you want to make sure their face is super close. This again. Here. Yeah, they, they need like, to be well, uncomfortably well, close to that light. That. Yeah. So you literally see the rings in their <laughs> right. eyes. So you yeah, it's like this close to the face, and um, and then you put your phone through the ring, and it surrounds the face with light, and then there you go. Look at that. Oh here, <laughs> you can't see it. Oh, you got to turn the screen. Sorry, you're sparkling. <laughs> it's like okay. It. We didn't rehearse that, so it's not it's not going that well. But that that's the thing. So get a ring light. Just trust us, it works. Go on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I like the Diva ring light. I think it works really well. But make sure you get the one that um, adjusts uh, with the lighting level, the brightness. It's got a dimmer. I guess it would be the word. Isn't that in the outside? Don't we have that one? That's what we have in the salon. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I ordered quickly the other two, and both of them don't have dimmers on them, which is fine for in here. But when you're working in a salon, especially if you are like you can only get so far away from someone or whatever you want to make sure you can control the light so and i believe brian ordered the one that attaches to your iphone yeah, yeah. that didn't go so well and that didn't go so well so no. don't don't, don't waste your one. money yeah don't, don't worry about that one <laughs> you don't need it people ask about it all the time can you put the one on the phone it's not the same and the reason it's not the same is because it just even though it's a circle it's putting that right into the face but not surrounding the head so the reason you get such a good picture of it is to get like a good a picture, you have to have light yeah. in front of you. You have to have light kind of behind you or on top of your head. So it surrounds uh, the person. It's just the best way to get that kind of lighting. So I even use it in a lot of the video shoots at the very end to get the last shot of the person. Even though I have tons of lighting, which you guys can see behind, um, even though we have all that lighting, I still use the ring light at the very front. It just brightens up the face. So that's that. So if you guys want to enter that contest, uh, go to paulmitchell.com slash, slash. I don't think that's on here. It's paulmitchell.com slash C O T L. Color outside the lines. C O T L. Uh, and you can get all the information and see all more stuff about it. Um, the next news story that we have, and then we're going to get into giving some stuff away, and that's pretty much the show. This cool. Is, Oh, we got to talk about your perm. Oh, oh yeah. So, um, so we have a perm with Olaplex that we did today, that Danielle did today. And uh, so I want to talk about that. Let's talk about that now, and then I'll, I'll do this in a second. So right. uh, Danielle came in to me today, and she said she wanted to try out doing some perms. This is the one thing I, not the one thing, uh, one of the things that I really like about Danielle mm -hmm. is that she is constantly coming in here and saying, I want to try this on a mannequin. Do you mind if I do that? I'm like, please, for the love of God, I love everything that has to do with practicing things, right? So um, you today decided to do a perm. So let's talk about what happened, and then okay. we'll get into the Olaplex thing. 
Well, I had seen that Emma Stone and her hairstyle, I'm sorry, not her hairstyle, was her makeup mm-hmm. artist, um, went and got bestie perms. Okay. So, and they use flex rods. I was like, oh, I got perms. I got flex rods mm-hmm. in the basement. Let me go do this. Right. And unfortunately, I had an incident as an educator, like towards the end, where there was a girl that really wanted to try out the perm. Yeah. And even though I knew better that she had, you know, like a double process blonde yeah. going through the ends, shouldn't have done it, but I did and totally messed up her hair. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I want to give this another go. And of course, talking with Brian, even in Germany, he was like, oh, yeah, Olaplex was actually made for that for perms. But then it was through, you know, trying out other things at other salons that they found you can use it in color. I was like, what? I didn't know yeah. that. And you can use it in relaxers. So I was like, get the hell out of here. Well, right. they did it with perms and then Joe Santi, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I, of course, came in and I'm like, hey, I don't really know everything or anything really about Olaplex. So, you know, you went onto the website and you were like, yeah, let's get the measurements for it. So it was what? One sixteenth. Sixteenth, yeah. In the processing liquid and one sixteenth in the neutralizer. No step two. And this mannequin actually is platinum card, and it had Color XG UTV 10 volume in the front and kind of mixed in in the back. And it also had Pop XG. So okay. it had a couple of different services going on. And I was like, all right, this is the perfect one to try this out. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if she's going to be bald yeah. or not. Yeah. So did the whole thing, flex rods, and it's true to its word. Okay. And the other great thing that you had mentioned when we looked on the website was that unlike most other perms, you don't have to wait the 48 hours to shampoo it. You can yeah. shampoo it right after getting it done. This so, is what I'm finding this very interesting. Cause I, Jay uses it with um, uh, Jason okay. Tull, uh, from New York. Yeah. <laughs> he okay, uses Jay. it with relaxers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm so excited about that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm psyched. I, I there's we want to start creating some perm because we create videos for Olaplex and I want to start creating some perming videos and it the thing that blew my mind today was looking that up I knew that you could mix it I knew it was made for perms I knew all that well we knew the history of yeah, it because yeah. I did an interview and if you guys want to check it out if you want to know more about Olaplex I just did an interview with Joe Santi who was the one that he's a perm master from uh from the 80s last he, year I think okay, you did sense. it right the beginning of it Sh- when we opened the studio he was one of the first people to come here okay so he um middle of last year okay yeah so he uh he came in and we talked about it and he dean from olaplex sent olaplex to him and said you know i created this thing for perms and i think you're really gonna like it and then joe started trying it and then as a hairdresser we've talked about this in the past he decided to use it in other things uh because of the theory behind it building bonds and it worked really well for color and the market was just so there was nothing bigger. there right right on the market well, nothing like this yeah. like that yeah, yeah so no, that's why olaplex kind of just took over yeah like bond building didn't exist and but also the perm market and the color market, if you can put out a product that's... Oh, yeah, the perm no market wasn't there, right? right. <laughs> in the color market, obviously, that makes a lot more sense. So they went straight into the color market. But um, but the perming market is still there. And uh, what I love about this is that you can mix a 16th of an ounce of that into the processing liquid or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. And then the neutralizer, <laughs> you put a 16th of an ounce. Perm solution. <laughs> perm solution. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do the one. Perm. You're the only one that, 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 that does one perm. Nope. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm the only one in the salon that does a perm, and I do <laughs> one every six months. I I did it for you while you were away. You did. So that was my one perm for the. Oh my god, that's yeah. so funny. Yeah, but, but like Danielle like, said, I'm, you're sending her home, and her hair smells good. Right. Yeah. It's you great. know, like it's it feels good, washed out, smells good. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Like it's amazing <laughs> to me that you can shampoo it. We've been telling people forever. That uh, you can't shampoo it, and now with and according my to legally blonde, yeah, yeah. So my perm <laughs> lady Marge, who I do every six months, that I never shampoo her afterwards. I can't wait for this. She's gonna be so, so happy. Yeah, she's gonna be excited. Her husband. Well, be happy. that and <laughs> now kidding. she's not gonna have to have like the perm pillow. So the one that stinks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. I, and this was great because literally, there. I wish that I had saved just the tiny little bit of hair that actually came out from having to detangle a little bit. Yeah. There I was, was amazed that, that that wasn't from that. That was from no. the bleach. Let's uh, all be oh, serious. Oh, bleach yeah. and heat. <laughs> <laughs> I am so out. impressed with this uh, perm today because I've been drinking the 
Olaplex Kool-Aid for a while. Like, I love it. It Mm -hmm. helps my hair. It helps so many of my guests' hair. Right. And um, I'm looking at this mannequin that Danielle is telling me that she's going to perm. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm like, I don't even know if Olaplex can (laughs) save that. Because, I mean. (laughs) Right. It's seen a lot of love. It's seen a lot of lightener. And um, I don't have a ton of experiences with perms. But mostly because I was traumatized by the fact that my mom's hair fell out over a perm. Right. So that. Mm. That that was a little shocking to me, so I'm like, oh, this is this isn't gonna go well. I'm like, maybe we should time to see how fast the the perm rods fall off the head. She <laughs> really did say that. I did say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, thanks, Dre. Well, they no look good. Faith. But the fact that uh, she had less hair coming out after the perm than when we just shampooed yeah. the mannequin, okay. the amount of hair that came out before the perm happened, I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay. And it actually felt good too. Yeah. So like it feels so much better than when we start when you started this. I say yeah. we I washed well, you no, do like this. You right. you at least washed mannequins with me. You you stayed with me. Until but the then per- you ran away and as soon as I mixed the perm. Like <laughs> and the smell's about to start. Bye. Yeah. But I pretty much well, ran around having everybody pull on it. Like, no, give it a real tug. Like, look, you can pull on it. It's not snapping. That's good. All right. So I'm yeah. excited to start creating some different wave videos because why not, right? A lot of people want to know about it. And I, the biggest comment that came from my Joe Santi interview was, can you please do some perm videos? So um, we'll be doing it for Olaplex, but also um, but also every, everywhere else as well. So uh, last thing I want to really talk about, then we're going to start giving stuff away to those of you that are watching live. Uh, stay tuned. Also, if you have any comments about anything we talked about, give us a call. Uh, Cosmoprof North America announces an exclusive. It's not on your notes. This one like, I, I, I'm like, yeah, I don't I see bother. this. Andrea is like, I'm lost. Uh, so <laughs> Cosmoprof North America, they announced an exclusive collaboration with LA Fashion Week this year. Oh, okay. Um, so their Vegas uh, show, which we've been to two years in a row. Right? True. It's our surprise trip of the year. <laughs> surprise, and, we're going. Yeah. So um, we've been out to the Cosmoprof show in Naha two years in a row. It's a really fun trip for us. And um, I think the biggest thing about it is that, um, let's see, Cosmoprof North America, the all-encompassing, award-winning business-to-business beauty event in North America, is proud to announce its special collaboration with LA Fashion Week, uh, the official Fashion Week of Los Angeles. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the CPNA always seeks to uh, out innovative and complementary collaborations and once again uh, created a solid initiative never before done by a beauty exhibition. I think this is cool. I, I think um, the fact that they're going to be a part of, of all of that just makes sense. You know, Cosmoprof, to me, is doing everything right right now like they are over the last couple years they gathered up influencers on the internet um they've just like they create content they they um you know they're doing things like this but they have hair shows all over the country they have more hair shows than any other uh company does it's just unbelievable all the things that they're doing and they're doing it very very well so uh i think it's gonna be cool Uh, we'll see what this collaboration is i actually got this email today from their marketing department they're like here's a press release i'm like all right i like press releases so um if more people want to do that i love getting this kind of information because um i like to uh, we are a media outlet um and i think we have we're able to kind of spread the word so it's cool so july 2018 it's the july 29th through the 31st at Mandalay Bay Convention Center, uh, which is where it was last year as well. It's been there the last two years. Is yeah. it always there? I'm guessing. I mean... Uh, Maybe. For three years now. Three so, years in a row it's been at Mandalay and Bay. And it's going to... So this year uh, at Mandalay Bay, what a great time. I think it's cool uh, as a team that we mm-hmm. go to that uh, and just uh, experience it together. And that is that. So... <sighs> Man, we talked about a lot. There was one other thing. I bought this. So sometimes I like to go on to Amazon and buy things. And um, last week I went on and I bought these. So these are my favorite clipper blades ever. Uh, these are the Andis Purple Magnetic mm-hmm. Clipper Blades. Now, I've are clipper guards, you can call them. Yep. They're not blades. So some barber's going to kill me on that one. So... <laughs> 
Clipper you yourself. guards. Okay. You just made a mistake. I, I know. We know it what's happens. in that mug over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks. So I so I purchased this. I was really excited about it. I also purchased this. I love battery operated clippers, so I try to buy as many as I can to try out find out which one's the best. And this one is the Andis Cordless NVLI, which thank you, Chris, mm -hmm. which is um to me like the wall designer cordless. It's basically the same thing. I um have the wall designer. I really loved it. Um but I wanted to fit it on the Andis guards. So because I had that, um, I ordered this clipper. This clipper is more expensive than the wall and it does not feel as nice as the wall. So I love Andis clippers to death. It's like the, it's the only mm -hmm. clipper I use. Um, but this one to me, it's, it's fine, but it's not as good a quality. I don't think, um, when it comes down to it. But with that being said, these guards are the best. It so, are, is it um, single magnet or double? So here is why we're talking about this today. So last week I ordered the double magnet. Johnny wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> last week I ordered the double magnet by accident, but I also, it wasn't even by accident. I was excited because it has two magnets and I was thinking, wow, two magnets would be way better than one magnet. It would stick on here really solid, yeah. right? <laughs> Wrong. There's two screws on every Andis Clipper except for the Andis Master Series, which has flush screws. So this Clipper Guard, which every barber out there, I get it, you know. But hairdressers don't know, So, and maybe they don't know. Maybe you don't too. I don't know. But these guards do not fit on this. The screws hit it. It slips off. It doesn't even reach around it. So this works on the Master Series, which is the double... Uh, magnet, which you can get on um, Amazon, which I didn't even think you could get anymore. That's why I was excited and ordered it. Look at that. Um, is Johnny? Are, is is he a barber? He I'm said sure. with the NVLI, you need to use the single magnet guard. So Johnny, I bought the single. <laughs> so today I, I got in the single because I um I wasn't aware that the double didn't work. So just want to put out a public service announcement about this <laughs> that. Now I'm excited. I just opened it and these fit perfectly on there. But these are the best blades ever because anytime you're working on a metal surface or anything, you can stick them to it. They snap right onto the guards really well. They hold very tight. Um, they're the best guards there are. So if you and guys it's use. It's nice that they also stick together. So less yeah. chance of losing your guards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They also yeah. stick on your station. So Jordan uh, Cox had asked, uh, do you like that wireless Andis for bald fades? Johnny said no, Jordan. So <laughs> I can't answer that. I don't do bald fades. Um, and this is the thing. Like, I've, I've definitely learned my my place in men's hair. Like, my place <laughs> is texture. And, and I love men's hair. I love cutting. And I love conversation with guys as well. So um, I love having a male clientele. And I have a 50%, if not now, 60%, 70% male clientele at this point. But... Um, I don't do bald fades on any of them. It's not my thing. I, I don't study it. Um, and there's a lot of people that are really good at that stuff. So um, so I can't answer that question. Johnny answered it. Um, but it is a really good clipper for just doing in-salon work. And I love having a, a battery-powered clipper. I have the Super ZR from Andis as well. That thing is super powerful. It has the metal blades. Um, so I like both. I like having that one and this one to kind of work in those other things. But the Andis Master Series is definitely uh, hands down the best clipper for that kind of work, I think. Yeah, um, I like the uh, the Envy for uh, two guard and up. And then like, yeah. if you incorporate anything below it, like you can use your one guard on there to like get the bulk out. But you're going to want to use your Masters in order to like really get a nice blend on anything below two. Yeah, especially because... Like when you look at different clippers, you'll notice like this one's really good. It's got wide teeth on it. So it's good for quick work, right? Um, the Andis Master Series, you can get all different types of blades for it, but sometimes it has a lot tighter teeth. Um, and this one, and, and because it's battery powered, it's not as powerful. So if you think about uh, working uh, on tiny little hairs and trying to work something much tighter, I would imagine, because I don't do it, but I would imagine um, because of the tight t or the wide teeth, it's not really taking up the hair in the way that you would want it. It's like trying to cut a precision cut with a really wide tooth comb. just doesn't make sense uh, to me, and that would be what I would think it would do. So um, 
Well, most barbers that I know, they've got anywhere from like three to as many as like eight different yeah. clippers or buzzers or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And they've got, well, I know there's so many different. There's trimmers, there's edgers, there's all of that stuff. I'm not a barber, so I don't know right. the terminology. But um, every barber that I see, like their station is covered yeah. in all of these different things. And they have them like set up perfectly and they have so reasons for everything exactly like it's for yeah. different hair types it's for different looks it's you know skin tight when you're when you're working on textured hair or straight hair or whatever they're, they're think all that different. it was just like all bogus <laughs> and then it would, they just got like scammed by like marketing and now i can say like no that yeah not at <laughs> there, all. There, there is a reason for them and the, yeah. and the the thing is like you got to think about it like when i cut with the metal blades and i do maybe a, a three and a half to a two Sometimes it's great and the blend is great, mm -hmm. but then sometimes you're like, "Oh, that didn't blend at all." So it's the different hair types. Then I then I'll grab something like this to then get just a different. It's got the adjustable arm on it, so I can really fine tune my adjustment. So it just really depends, and that's why they I'm sure they have uh, a lot of clippers. So I love like the conversation going on in the chat right now. Okay. So Jay has been like on and on, help, like on and off helping people about the relaxers and the different brands and whatnot. And now yeah. Johnny like chimed in about the, the, you know, the clippers and Jordan Cox is like, thanks. Matt. Is thanks, Johnny, a is he a barber? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, is he, he a J cash? He, oh no, he is a stylist, but he pretty much only cuts guys. Okay. So um, he's J cash. Uh, underscore Instagram? yeah the hair tech but uh, everyone's asking now like what you know just the conversations the chat going on is yeah i was actually sweet. talking to him uh, about a week ago he seems pretty cool and he's local and does a lot of awesome uh, local work. here yeah, mm -hmm. yeah oh he's around here yeah oh, matt yeah. he he's said you're Philly, the reason right? why he started cutting girls again ah well there you go <laughs> he got hair too um so uh, johnny next time you're uh wait where if you want to call, where you, where call are you? in. Yeah, where are you? Where Philly? are you right now? No, like where <laughs> where where does he do yeah, hair? What do you mean local? Where is he Dad? from? Um, You're not sure. he'll, he'll now we're looking able, on Instagram. I was gonna say he'll probably be able now to we're stalking you than, uh, <laughs> while we're on online. So uh, he's in not? Sharon, PA. Oh, cool. Oh, that's well, a, that. I mean, that's that? not right around the corner. PA's far big uh, place. Sharon, PA is west, right? West, west. Well, we're as far east as you can <laughs> get. So. Well, yeah, that's true. We're, we're, but I'm just saying direction. Much, oh, well, yeah. you still could go north or south. <laughs> north or south. If he's east, he's he's down on Main Street. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I know Shut what you up. mean. No, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, he's like five hours away, and Pennsylvania to drive through from here is six, so he's pretty yeah, far, far away from us. Oh, that's okay. what I'm. Johnny, um, you can just call us um, if you want to <laughs> chime in. I, this is where I would really like, because now that we have the live phone, our our people, our core community, I would like you guys to get... We totally drive by Sharon on our way to uh, your, I bet, on, yeah. My family? Yeah, because it's not too far from Ohio, probably. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um... Oh, that's there. But yeah, I would like, I would like um, I, I our community to get more involved and uh, start calling in for those kind of things, because if you have something to say... We don't know the answer to everything, obviously. Um, so it'd be We're cool. Not perfect. I would love to hear people's opinions. Yes, and Jay, we are practically in New Jersey. That's yes, what Jay's we saying. are. Yeah, because yeah, you're only yeah. an hour from me in New Jersey. Yeah. I can roll <laughs> down into New Jersey. From Jay's here. in Brooklyn. Jay's in Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, he's been to our salon before. I wasn't really? there though. Yeah, you did you tell me. Yeah. yeah. Is it mm -hmm. the old one? Um, that was uh. So so yeah. So Jay is close. Like I I love. Like people don't have to come here anymore. You can call in whenever you want and uh, and chime in on the show. So, uh, with that being said, what else? I don't know. We're like right on time. We started five minutes late. It's about fifty eight, fifty four seconds right now. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock. All right. So we're gonna give some stuff away. In fact, yes. can you get some music going? Uh, let's say you guys need to call in right now. Uh, eight to eight. You have to tell me the number so I can put it here. I know. Hang on. Let me. I, have I know what it is. I put it on the other. I know what other. it is. Don't tell me. So this is the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. Um, One more thing. We have, uh, while I look up this number, we have uh, a new podcast starting next week. I'm going to do a little business podcast every day. So, and it's only audio. So uh, I want to show you guys that. That actually has the number up there, Chris. That's the number. It up you're there. so good. Oh, you're oh, so, so you're good. you're talking about your audio podcast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Look at you. Go talk Hello. about it. You should work this on is, TV. This 
this is so what are you talking this woman? about? I run this show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like came up real with TV. half of the topics. This show be nothing without me. So this is the show. Um, so Dad, that should be basically when we do the audio portion, all you're gonna see is this. Um, but we're gonna do some talking. I'm gonna have some guests um, come call in. Also, Christina will probably be involved in that. People randomly from the team will be on it. She we'll should just, run the show. We're just gonna have fun. I really want to do like Who's a, run this a quick. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do. <laughs> I want to do a daily show about salon business, and it whether it's 15 minutes or whatever. I want to make time to just talk real just quick. so they know this is the number yeah that, okay as you're talking about your number. your podcast 833 373 yes. 5483 yes so there you go if you don't know now you know <laughs> you know what i'm wondering i wonder if the phone's not working for some reason oh mm. that would just be that would, that just, would just yep <laughs> yeah yeah what is it? can somebody let me know if they have tried to call in and it's not working because i don't know what to do about that I have to give out my real phone number. It's one eight eight three. I'm just kidding. It's eight eight three or eight three three. Eight three three. People just don't want to talk. <laughs> There's just literally no one watching anymore. Um, three seven three. Yeah, three seven three. I got it. Five four eight three. Watch Dre will get through. She's spinning the wheel. I was gonna say. That. <laughs> what, got what's it saying, Dre? Dre has a hike to uh, to go to the wheel. It's not working. They tried calling. Oh. It's past 9 p.m. Hmm. You have, you have a nice little message there. Tell okay, so let's back. pick someone while I fix this let's real quick. This. Um, let's pick someone to to spin the wheel. Uh, somebody in the chat. Let's do that. And then I will get this fixed. The wheel is far. You have to go far now. <laughs> also, we didn't talk about Brian. So let's talk about Brian real quick because okay. he's right there eating a brat. <laughs> he probably fell asleep because he's not in the chat anymore. He oh, said, was he tell, in the chat? A while back, yeah, he's like, I stayed up just to watch the show. He's like, tell Matt I love him in German. First of all, I don't know how to speak German. I only have room. But I, I, love him. I do love you. I and I responded back, love. don't be weird. Yeah. <laughs> and he responded back, if that said that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, true. so it was funny because I was talking to Brian and he was watching part of the show from last week and um, we were FaceTiming, I think on the weekend. And he goes, so I saw the show, a little bit of it, and I love that my picture was up there, but was it ever addressed as to where I was or was it just <laughs> the awkward photo in the... In it was the just the photo. No, no, no. When we got a caller at the end, somebody asked... Uh, I forget who it was, but they asked, where's Brian? Oh, and that he was in... Ger I thought like exactly where he was eating the... Oh, no, 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 no. The Just wiener. Like no, Brian court. goes like... I like it. This is Pizzeria. It's Globus, right? The brat. It's the brat. No, Does yeah. Does it say Pizzeria like, behind him? How or? come the brats... I can't wait to ask him how come the brats in America are so much thicker. Like, l legit. Like, they are. That one looks... Well. Well, no, si no, well, don't you know, take it there. I know, yeah, but I'm serious. You know the brats are smaller and thicker here that they sell here in the U.S. and in the Midwest because. I well, mean, I just want to know why there's a a bagel. It's uh, with a bagel? No, there's no hole in that. Oh, it's like a oh, it's, it's a holeless a, bagel. Well, it's I don't a roll. Know. It's, it's a roll. A roll bagel. It a roll. Like, it's a it's bread. Um. <laughs> it looks like a sausage. It, well, that's what they are. With the mustard. But, like, it... <laughs> depending well, on he's the basically on an eating tour. I mean, he was yeah. in France the other day. His brother's right on the border of Germany where he can just they take a 40-minute ride to they, Lorraine, Fl They France. went to the market in France. I hope he's having a, the best time ever. For grocery shopping. So, so we kind of sidetracked. Did, did we pick a, somebody to win? Yeah, I would like to spin the wheel now. Well, we didn't because I think... She wants to do her job. Um, I'm, I'm ready to be Vanna again. Batman? If we are. Oh. I think we're. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, okay. I, so I, I, I thought. Uh, sorry, I thought we were we were picking somebody from the chat. No, we can continue oh, our ADD bad. moment. Um, <laughs> sorry, ADD moment like came back around to the original moment. Just, just <laughs> it always comes around. around. And this is how we operate every day in the salon too, by the way. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, we're very random, but it's nice. It's fun. Johnny uh, uh, said thanks, Dad, for the um, time you spent, the few minutes you took to message him back. Oh, anytime. 
But thank you for uh, commenting and uh, liking my photos. No, I had a moment of where I felt like Brian um, today, where I thought that we were going to get in trouble because, <laughs> <laughs> because Danielle and I were practicing for the show and we were doing the free pong. By practicing for the show, you mean you were playing uh, free pong? Free yes. pong. Well, it wasn't beer pong because we didn't have any alcohol at that time. Um, it's true. But, like, I'm constantly talking. Brian and I are. Brian always thinks we're in trouble for something. <laughs> Kristen's like Matt left. He's trying to fix the phone number so we can. We're stalling, Kristen. We, we are yeah. stalling. Continue <laughs> to listen so to our story. Matt's like whatever. So Brian always thinks we're in trouble for something, and he's probably gonna get mad at me for saying this on air. But I don't we're care. We're gonna get it. But so Danielle and I are standing in over here by the free pong table, and we're just practicing. We're wasting time. We we finished early tonight, so we're just like, mm -hmm. let's go do this. And uh, we had our group chat, and Brian was saying how he was waiting for the show to start. And I said we were practicing. And what, it's like a five-hour difference, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Six-hour difference. Ah, there you go. So then all of a sudden, there's uh, another group chat that comes up from Matt. And Matt goes, what are you practicing? And I was like, oh, my God. Are we in trouble? We're, I'm and like, I didn't have my I'm, phone on me. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, She's like, I'm well, like, exit now. Boss. Exit now. <laughs> exit now. We're leaving. We're leaving. But so I responded, uh, Danielle and I are uh, practicing free pong. Is that okay? And he's like, oh, I thought I forgot about something. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I don't know, I don't even know what's going on. I left my phone in the other room. Like, I'm yeah, an Dan iPhone blasphemer. I no, leave it all over the place. But you're like my dad that way. No, thanks. You're welcome. Well, I'm glad you love me, though. But I do love you. I love my father, too. But, you I know. Have, but. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. I'm just happily oblivious. Like, I, I still suck at free pong, but I'm da still going ahead and practicing. I know. Danielle's like yelling at me. She's like, are you going to play? Like, come on. And I'm like, like, like she's my, hyperventilating. In my the boss corner is texting me. Thumbs we, are going a mile a I'm minute. Like, we need to make sure this is OK. We might need to exit right now. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Matt, let's just spin the wheel. All right. So who's our winner? Christina. Are you going to you usually pick? Um, do you want me just to pick Matt? Why don't we just have Johnny be? All right. How about, because we were chit-chatting with him. All right. So. All right, Vanna, go do your thing. All right. So Johnny, Johnny will spin the wheel. How's that? Yes. Who are the sponsors, Danielle? So. So we have Olaplex, Free Salon Education, Minerva. Ergo, and Donald Scott, and the coveted Mizutani, as well as Sunlight's Balayage. Yes. Well, we already said Minerva, girl. Get with it. <laughs> Hoping this works. All right, now. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give it a spin. And it's Minerva. It? Powered by All Minerva. Right. <clears throat> Looks like we're giving away two blow dryers tonight. Oh, are they getting blow dryers from Minerva? Yeah, they're I think fantastic. So. Yeah. No. I'm Although, not sure. Still waiting for that little whirlpool of hair yeah. to pull still out of the back. Still haven't gotten it. Still <laughs> have not gotten it. You haven't gotten it yet? No. no. All right, cool. So, um, sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with the phone, and I don't know if it's even working. You can try. You can try to call us, but I don't know. <laughs> um, sorry. It's like it's always one thing. There's always a thing that it doesn't work. Yeah. So we'll figure it out this That's week, okay. and we'll get the calls back, and you can call into the new podcast also on Monday. Um, all right. Who wants to throw the free pong? Who wants to pick someone to throw the free pong? Anybody in the chat? Uh, post there if you'd like to do it. Um, also. Drea and Danielle, like they said, were practicing. <laughs> it didn't help. And I did say I still suck. <laughs> so You guys both made. When we left last week, you you threw and it went right in. Yeah. Well, actually, so, today, Drea got I'm just trying to sell them on picking you guys. Okay. <laughs> pick whoever. Are people watching on Facebook, Thanks. too? Why don't you pick someone from Facebook? Cause yeah. there's, Let me see. There's people watching all over, you know. Um... 
Jordan Cox is on. Is he really? Yeah. Okay. Free pong? Yeah. Win a blow dryer? Win a blow dryer. Jordan Cox. Got it. Who do you want to throw for you? He commented oh. on Facebook earlier, so Oh, there he's you on go. Facebook and the chat. Oh, he's, he's all, all over the place. place. Perfect. <laughs> Multitasker. So right. He is a good presence on social media. He all right. Really is. Oh, and thank you for yeah, he is. saying that my picture was beautiful, Jordan. I appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> mm. um, so, Jordan, you get to pick um, a person to do free pong. Yeah. Yeah. And they better get the balls in. Dre and Danielle are really good. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he picking? He, he just, I don't know. Let's see. Do, 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 He's going to pick Matt. Here we do, go. Can we have the Jeopardy do, song? <laughs> yeah, can I get the Jeopardy song so I don't have to do the hit myself? I don't know if legally we can play the Jeopardy song. <laughs> Thad, he wants well, you to do it, Thad. Oh, oh Thad. Thad. <laughs> Matt can run the, yeah. I'll run the music. You run the vault. Yeah. <laughs> He looks really happy about running the music right now. I was going to say, I, he's I can, psyched. I'll press buttons. I can do this that. This is where I would be yes, the whole the time buttons. if I could. <laughs> this is the only reason I'm having my own. Now you get podcast. all the balls. All the balls. All the balls. All right. So, what'd you say, Matt? You got four You're tries. You're in heaven right now. I know. I know. I love this. Here we go, Thad. All right, Thad. Oh. Mm. I don't know what these buttons do, though. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Sad, Dad, you're going oh, to no arch more. it. Come your, on, your Dad. Your glories are gone. Jordan. <laughs> you have one I'm more ball. The music. There we go. Oh! oh! All right. Wait, wait, wait. I got it right here. <laughs> That's really <laughs> fun. There you go, Thad. Good job. I just wanted it to be suspenseful. <laughs> Congratulations, Jordan. You have your brand new blow dryer on the back. <laughs> your brand new blow dryer. Oh, brand wait, new, brand new. You, you might even say that it blows as well as we do at uh, Beer Pong. <laughs> Bad. Dad, you, uh, I totally messed up that music, so. Um, um, oh, did I sound awesome? We yeah, he can't razz you anymore about it. You've been it. doing great, yeah. We um, all right, this is the blow dryer right here. So uh, a couple of things I really love about it. It's lightweight. It's also super powerful. Um, I love the matte black back. The matte black back. <laughs> I wish it was like all over. Say matte back. <laughs> I said, can we do a matte back version of this and it'll be all matte black on the on the whole thing? Oh, no. I like the shiny part. You do? Well, yeah, I like the contrast between mine the two. Mine will have that. But yes, this is the new Minerva blow dryer. So um, congratulations, that is uh, the, the free pong master there. <laughs> um, all right. That's the show. <laughs> That's I hope it. you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> Next week, the phones will be up. This is what I want to put out there. Next week, lots of phone calls. I want to, because we didn't get any today, I want to talk to a lot of people next week. I'm just going to call out people that comment, and I'm not going to read their comments. I'm just going to tell them to call. Be okay. like, hey, call in and let's good talk call, about that. And we'll that. put the number. Yeah, yeah that's good. That. So we can get more um, chit chat. You know, live We're going to get chatter. intimate. Yeah, let's get into oh, it. Yeah, Absolutely. Let's get, all right. Because that's what it's all Not about. weird. Not weird. Not weird. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. Everybody that tuned in um, and everybody that watches this. When, I know a lot of you guys work on Wednesday nights. Wait, um, Kristen Collins was eating the, the pizza place tonight. First of all, making everyone super hungry about pizza. And <laughs> second of all, she said, can you please turn your music down? And she turned she turn us up. Wait, what? She was eating. She was eating at oh, a pizza place. Oh, at the place. pizza place. Yes. Oh, at a pizza yes. place. Yes, and she made them turn the music down. She was down. like, their music was too loud. I wanted them to turn <laughs> it down, so I turned you guys up. People are looking at me like I'm crazy. That's hilarious. They should get involved Thank too. You. I want some pizza. This is the best show. It's the best. It's show. the most fun. <laughs> yes. So, uh, email uh, contest at free yeah. salon education. All the winners. Yeah, your uh, your address and your name and your phone number. Yep. That's it. Contact info. All right. Follow Drea Boland. Hair by Dre Day. Danielle Downs at the Hands Downs, Christina and I at Free Salon Education, and Thad. Thaditude. Thaditude. And follow <laughs> Brian and watch him eat brats at Brian. Hairstyle, H A I R E. He's back, well, he's back, back next week. Page. He's back next week. He'll we should back ma- next we do week. miss him. Yeah. We, should ma- we do miss him. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> the salon is very quiet without Brian. And we need, um, we should have Brian do something uh, next week. 
on the show? Like show up? Um, how about the Besides well, like he, He's already got that <laughs> planned. I'm not ruining it, but he's already got something. Oh, he has what? something? I'm sure. Well, no, it has he to be has. approved. <laughs> he did not show up. by Matt no, Beck. No, no, no. It's ha- it is hair related. It will definitely <laughs> oh, be approved. Wait a minute, it's what wait the a Germans minute. are doing. His name is hair. <laughs> anything he does is hair related. <laughs> Touche. Oh, that good call, Thad. Yeah. That, was, that was loud and good call. <laughs> I found his loophole. He, he, he was going to pull some shenanigans. All right. No. All right. No. Remember, tune in to uh, the audio podcast starting Monday. Can't wait to uh, chat with you guys on there. Uh, follow us. Thank you guys for being a part of our community. We'll see you guys next week right here on Splitting Hairs. Hey, guys, I got one yeah. more thing. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. My name is Robert. Call me. What I want. And Robert. <laughs> It's that, a mixtape. You can't stop him. You just got to let him go. My name is Robert Cromins. No, you got to you got to hit something else. <laughs> My name is Robert Cromins. What there I want to talk to you about is the now, capture. In order to have